The more I dig into space engineers, the more I find. And this week, I get into using some basic scripts that enhance the game experience without circumventing its challenges. I realized that the initial setup to get scripts working in the game is not obvious or straightforward. So I'm gonna show you the basics of how to use scripts in Space Engineers. And as a bonus, show you a little trick you need to do to get GPS coordinates from data pads to permanently stick to your GPS tab. I was ready to explore the planet, and it picked up several data pads. So I wanted to show you a little trick right quick to get these GPS coordinates to set permanently. A little bonus in this script video. If you're like me, you probably bought several of these data pads, tried to get their coordinates set, but then ran into a little problem. When you open the data pad with a right click and use the create GPS marker function, it will temporarily post the coordinates. But there's something else you need to do to make them permanent, it seems. In the GPS tab, you get to by pressing K, the coordinates show up, but they'll look gray. I was able to add several of the coordinates and saw them being added, but then I noticed these gray entries started disappearing. They wouldn't permanently stick. What I figured out was that if after adding the coordinate from the data pad, I went to the GPS tab and clicked on the show on HUD option, then simply unchecked the show on HUD, assuming I didn't want it to be shown all the time, it would change it out of that gray color to white. White being the color for neutral factions, I think. That action of showing it seemed to lock it in and kept it from disappearing. I don't know if this is a bug or some workaround I'm having to do, but it's what worked. With the swarm of new GPS coordinates I had from all the data pads, I also needed to manage all these pads. You can either drop them into a separate container, or what I wound up doing is putting them into my assembler for later disassembly. It just kept the ones I loaded separate from all the rest. You'll also wind up getting duplicate coordinates from the data pads as you collect more and more particularly from a single station. If you create a GPS marker, then look into your GPS tab and the item is not gray, it means you already have that coordinate set from some other data pad. It seems the system won't let you create duplicates of the exact same coordinate. With all these markers, I had a lot of exploring to do. So I ran through and checked out several coordinates by showing them on the HUD so I could see how far away they were and then could select one that was maybe on the other side of the planet, or at least something farther away than the ENAT station I was going to, which was about 45 kilometers away. I picked up one about 160 kilometers away, which I figured would be a nice little trip. Now keep in mind, I had no idea how big this Earth-like planet really was, so it seemed like a reasonable choice. It was about three to four times the distance of the ENAT station. But, I was also wanting to set up some better displays for information before making this trip. Now, these LCD displays you can make in the game are really good for displaying information. And this is where the scripting came in. By default, there is some status information that can be displayed, but there's so much more and even better information you might want to have at your disposal. There are some really brilliant people out there that are good at this kind of C-sharp script programming. And there's literally libraries of scripts they've made available for other players to use. I took a look at several scripts available I could download and just use on the LCDs, or even to replace the default information you see on those cockpit panels. I finally settled on automatic LCDs, as the one that seemed to provide the richest array of options that I wanted, at least at the moment. But what I'm gonna share about this script setup should apply to any script you find out there that you wanna use, whether it be for LCDs or anything else. And there were several steps I had to go through even before using the script, and they weren't all obvious in the game. So here's what you need to do. Before doing anything, you need to activate experimental mode on your game. This allows scripts to be added to the programmable blocks. Without that, you'll be kind of stuck getting any external scripts to start loading in. 
To get to experimental mode, you have to get out of any current world that is loaded and running. You need to get to the main menu and open the options window and check the experimental mode option. There's a warning you may get about this because a person can use or create scripts that could cause the game to be unstable or circumvent a lot of the game mechanics that might be for performance and all kinds of things. But just be a little judicious about what scripts you use and you should be fine. Next, go to the load game screen, which is kind of an odd place to go for scripts, but once there, go to the edit settings and then advanced options. This is where you can change all kinds of things on your game. But what you want to make sure is checked is the in-game scripts. With experimental mode on and in-game scripts enabled, you're now able to actually start tinkering with the programmable block. In the programmable block, if you scroll down, you'll now see an edit option that you didn't have before enabling experimental mode. Click and open that. You'll see developer information on the screen that's there as part of the game's default information about basic script constructs for programmers. But we're not going there. We want scripts already tried, true, and feature rich. So go down to the bottom right and click Browse Scripts. In here, you'll see a list of scripts on the left that you may have already subscribed to. I'll cover subscriptions in a second. And in the main window, there's a description of information about that script its creator may have made available to tell you about it. If you haven't subscribed to any scripts though, all this will be blank. So what you want to do is actually subscribe to the script you want. There's a couple ways to get there, and if you click the Open in Workshop option, you'll be put into a sub-window of Steam's Workshop and can search for Space Engineers, then the scripts you want, and subscribe there. But it feels kind of clumsy. I found the best way is to use the Browse and Subscribe button on the top right in that row of icons. This will open up a pre-filtered list of scripts just for Space Engineers and sorts them according to the most voted, which in most cases, you'll find the script you want on the first handful of pages. And there's over 300 pages of scripts here, so there's a lot of script writers out there, which is where I'll make a slight editorial. Not all scripts are particularly good, or will even work. Many scripts might be old and written a long time ago, and not compatible with the current game version or take advantage of a lot of the new game features that have come out over the years. So it pays to do your homework and get a reliable script to avoid frustration. Right here on this array of presented scripts, you can click the square button on the bottom right of each and that will subscribe you to the creator's script. You can see the button highlighted for automatic LCDs because I'm already subscribed to that one. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna to subscribe to Izzy's Solar Alignment. Once you've subscribed, you can just close this screen with the X and get back to the prior screen. You can see Izzy's script has been added to my list of subscriptions and with its description displayed. So now it's a matter of making sure it's the highlighted script and selecting Copy to Editor. This takes you right back to the code editor screen we were at earlier that just had those basic programmer instructions. You don't even need to copy and paste anything. All the code is already loaded into the programmable block editor. And remember, we're still inside the programmable block. It's where we've done all this subscribing and copied to editor business. From here, you'll click the check code to run it through a compilation and make sure everything seems to be correct or compatible with the game. And if it is, and it should be, you'll get a compilation successful message. Even if it does throw some sort of warnings, the script, or at least parts of it, might still run and do what you want. I have this ship's schematic script running that does show the ship and highlights blocks in certain states, even though it did give a warning about some unrecognized variables or something. On the programmable block itself, I decided to label it. And to do that, you just scroll down to the content area, which is the content you see on the programmable block external screen, and select the text and image option, and type in the text you want. Now, back to the automatic LCDs. 
To project the information the script is gathering for you, you need to either display that on any of the game's LCDs or cockpit screens. Here, like pretty much any other script, is where you need to research the specific script you're using and see what the commands are the script understands and for the format of those commands. Automatic LCDs has a lot of configuration options and the developer has made a full guide to read as well as an introductory video. It can show you stuff about your inventory, cargo capacities, power, damage, and more. I've got several things from it showing on these LCDs, including this little corner LCD that shows one simple but important bit of data for me. It's the ore that's currently being processed by the refinery. I just think these LCDs not only look really cool, but provide a lot of handy information without having to scroll through and find it on an inventory or control panel screen. I also plan to start sending some of this information to my cockpit screens. The right scripts can be a game changer, and one like this LCD information, I think, will become more and more useful as my mobile base and its complexity of utility keeps growing. We're off to discover a new location from those GPS data pad coordinates, but where will we end up? Tune into the next episode of this series to see where we ended up, but I'll tell you, it's not what I expected.